Tonight I'm going to photograph the planet Saturn from my backyard. I'm going to be out here with my telescope quite literally from dusk till dawn, and I couldn't be more excited. The nights where I go after planets from the backyard are always really special nights. I don't do it often, and it's always an adventure. So stick around with me tonight while I observe and capture the planet Saturn through my telescope in my own backyard. Oh my god. Before I say anything else, I want it to be very clear that I am no expert in planetary photography. Although I have been looking at and taking pictures of planets since 2018, I only do it a few nights every year. My planetary photography setup and knowledge is nowhere near the level of my deep sky astrophotography. I'm just using the best gear that I have and having fun with it as I go. But that's why these nights are always adventures. That's what makes them fun. I'm learning too, and as we go along tonight, we're gonna figure this out together. So what's so different about planetary photography? Isn't it all just taking pictures of stuff in space? Deep sky astrophotography and planetary photography are literally polar opposites of each other. For deep sky photography, you take hours and hours of long exposure still pictures of your object, sometimes going over into multiple nights. Whereas for planetary photography, you take a bunch of short videos, then you go back through the thousands of still frames in that video and pick out a few of the best ones and blend those together. This is called lucky imaging. I'll dive more into that later. So as for the conditions tonight, it's not looking great. The wildfires from Canada have been spewing smoke all over North America, my backyard included. This morning, there was a big hole in the smoke where the skies were actually crystal clear, and it's getting to be smoky right now, but at about two in the morning, we'll have another sucker hole in that smoke where Saturn will be at its highest. The skies have been gray and hazy all week, and right now the smoke is coming back. It'll be bad back into the purple at about 8 p.m., so I'm hoping that that forecast stays true and that that hole does come while Saturn is up. So I'm thinking I'm gonna take that time from dusk until about one or two in the morning to sort of re-familiarize myself with everything. Get familiar again with my software and how everything works with the layout and everything, and just make sure that my setup is working as it should. So I wanna make sure that I'm ready to go so that when go time comes around, I'll be good. Yeah, the skies do not look so good right now. We're in the green, or I think the yellow right now, on Astrospheric. There's a huge wall of purple coming, which will be here at around 8, like I said. So right around sunset, the whole area will be grayed out. Right now, it's not too bad. It's worse than it was this morning. But you can definitely see that orange sort of cast that the sunlight has on everything right now. It's reminding me of last summer when everything was smoked out for a good month and a half. I'm just getting so tired of this smoke. It's putting a halt to all my plans, but not tonight's plans. So I'm gonna get all my stuff set up right now and then I'll go over what exactly I'm using to photograph Saturn tonight. It's a little later now and I want to actually go over what gear I'm using to take a picture of Saturn before the sun gets too low and it gets too dark. So this is the setup for Saturn tonight. It looks crazy. It, I'm way undermounted, but this is the only mount I have that works, so don't make fun of me too much. This is the Orion Starmax 90mm Maxitov Cassegrain Telescope. It's small, but it packs a punch. It's got an aperture of 90 millimeters and a native focal length of 1,250 millimeters. That is much better than my deep sky telescope, my Skywatcher 72ED, which has a focal length of 420 millimeters. So with almost triple the focal length, I'll be able to bring Saturn in for a closer look. But that's not all. I also have a 3x Barlow lens 
lens from SV Boney, which will go in between the camera and the telescope, which will actually multiply the telescope's focal length by three times. This will turn this telescope into a monster with a focal length of 3,750 millimeters. Now initially this sounds really great, I mean more focal length is better, right? Although the SV Boney Barlow lens will bring Saturn in to make it the perfect size, it's a cheaper, lower quality Barlow lens than some of the other options available. And I've noticed that using this Barlow lens will tend to decrease the sharpness and overall quality of the image through my telescope. So as the night goes on tonight, we'll see which is better. We'll see if less resolution but higher contrast beats out less contrast but more resolution. And the camera at the back is the same as all of my other videos, my ZWO ASI 533MC Pro. It is equally good at both deep sky and planetary, and that's exactly what I'll be using tonight. This really is a makeshift setup. This used to be my guide scope for my deep sky setup. I'm using it right now as a finder scope with an eyepiece at the back. I have it centered so that whatever this telescope sees in its center is what this telescope sees in its center. It just makes it easier to find planets in the night sky. With a zoomed in telescope like this, it's really hard to center them. So with this sort of finder scope, which presents you a wide field of view, you can see exactly where you're pointed and center Saturn much easier. It's a little flimsy though. You can move back and forth. Just have to make sure it's in the same spot. The mini PC, my trusty Mealy Quieter 3Q, is not going to be in use tonight. Instead, I'm going back to my roots and bringing out my laptop and putting it on a table next to my setup like a caveman. The software I'm going to be using with that laptop is Fire Capture. It is basically the planetary alternative to Nina, which you've seen me use in past videos. It'll let me control my mount, take my videos of Saturn, and do everything else I need to take a good picture of the planet. This is another reason why I need those hours before Saturn rises to really get familiar with everything. Fire capture is relatively easy to use, but I just want to make sure everything can talk to each other and I can actually run everything properly. I'm not even fully set up, I still need to get the laptop out here. And as for why I'm not using the mini PC, it's simply not powerful enough. I need a bigger, faster computer to handle those fast frame rates and large files, and my Dell XPS should be perfect for that. I can't just take a picture on a night like tonight though. Since I'm gonna be out there all night, I'm also gonna use my eyepiece at the back of my telescope, which is not something you'll see very often at all on this channel. It's been almost two years since I've looked at the planet Saturn, maybe actually more, and I miss that experience. The planet Saturn was what got me into astronomy in general. It started the black hole for me, as I'm sure it did with many of you guys. First it was the moon, looking at the moon through my telescope, and then I moved on to the planets, and Saturn was first on the list. Seeing those rings live through the eyepiece brought me to a place mentally that is hard to describe. It changed the way I live my life, honestly. I went through the process that many of you guys are familiar with, slowly upgrading your gear and transitioning into deep sky astrophotography. But for me, Saturn was the one that started it all. Something that I'm very fortunate to be able to say is that to this day I have all of the gear that I got started with as an astronomer and an astrophotographer. This telescope you see here was my very first telescope I ever used. This is the one that got me started in it all. My Celestron 72mm first scope. It's got a bunch of names of famous astronomers on the side and it came with a 20mm and a 4mm eyepiece. This telescope is what I looked through when I experienced that feeling that I talked about looking at Saturn for the first time. You can pick up a telescope just like this one for about 90 bucks on Amazon, and with this tool I was able to see the rings of Saturn. I wanted more though, so I ended up looking into a telescope with a longer focal length, and that's when I purchased the telescope that I'm actually using tonight, the Orion Starmax 90mm. It's kind of crazy that that telescope is one that I bought in 2019 and I've used it every year since then. After being done with this one and needing an upgrade from my Starmax, I purchased this beast the Orion Star Blast 4.5 inch reflector. This was the telescope that I took my first pictures of space with. I didn't actually use a DSLR because I didn't have one. I used my phone. I bought a Celestron adapter that holds your phone up to the eyepiece and I started trying to take deep space pictures with my iPhone from Bortle 9 City Skies without a filter. You can guess how that went. So it was all downhill from there. I bought my whole setup that you see in every video and I've been using that setup since for almost four years now. But 
on nights like these where I'm gonna be out all night, I like to bring these telescopes out and give them some use again and just look through them visually since I'm not actually doing a whole lot for the whole night. I get this sort of kick every year, this planetary kick. It's nothing new, but it's always really special to me when this happens. It's always at the end of July when I don't really have anything going on in the summer and the gas giants are at their peak. I love these few weeks where I bring out the Starmax 90mm and take some pictures of the planets. There's something besides the equipment and the style change of photographing the planets that makes it very different from deep sky. Obviously that's my main passion, that is what I do 90% of the time on this channel more than that but there's something about photographing a planet that's different some of you may have different experiences and may feel differently but at least to me I feel much more connected with space and the solar system and the universe when photographing a planet versus photographing a galaxy or nebula maybe it's similar with galaxies but it's definitely the most abundant with planets that feeling of being connected with more than just earth more than just what you're immediately in contact with it makes you feel so small and like you're a part of something huge, much bigger than yourself. It really puts your life into perspective. And in a way, it makes it seem like these struggles that you're going through or have went through in the past aren't as big of a deal as you may think. Not so much in a negative way that it doesn't matter, but more in a peaceful way that you know there's something bigger happening. It brings me back to when I was much younger in 2018, staring at Saturn and the moon's craters from my driveway, and I love it. I shouldn't be saying this because I'm totally jinxing myself, but apparently we're in the purple for the smoke right now, and it doesn't look that bad. It looked much smokier early in the afternoon when we were apparently in the green, so I don't know, maybe Astrospheric's just not as accurate right now. But this is giving me hope. If this is what Astrospheric thinks is purple, I'm okay with that. A fair amount of you guys on my last video had a bunch of comments for me about the stiffness of my mount's axes. Apparently the axes on my mount were tightened too much. I'm very grateful for those of you that reached out to me about this. I followed a tutorial on how to loosen my mount's axes and those of you that had comments for me will be happy to know that my mount's axes are perfectly fine now. Same with the RA, we're good to go. So it's a little past eight o'clock now. Uh, it's about 20 minutes until sunset. And for once, I don't actually have to do anything. Normally you'll hear me say about now that it's go time and that I'm gonna start imaging, but I have nothing to do. So I guess we're chilling out for a little bit, waiting for it to get dark, and then we'll start experimenting with the setup. All right, so it has been a good number of hours now, and the smoke has cleared for the most part. I've gotten everything figured out with my setup that I wanted to figure out. All this stuff is talking to each other fine. I ended up using Stellarium to control the mount. That way I can send slew commands to the planets and other things. And then I'm using fire capture for the imaging, like I said. I thought I would be able to use fire capture to control the mount, but it ended up being for a different reason. So I'm using Stellarium. So Saturn is almost above the tree line right now, probably about 15, 20 more minutes and then it'll be good to go for imaging so as soon as it's up there I am gonna be ready to go the thing that makes tonight different versus my other planetary nights that I've done in previous years is that this one is actually going smoothly every other year something major went wrong where I had to get a late start on the planets I set up in the wrong spot my mount wasn't working my camera etc and everything has been going flawlessly so far a lot of that boils down to I was out here for a few hours sorting out every single kink in the setup and making sure that everything is working flawlessly before I actually get started. Anyways, let me show you the situation here. So here's the setup. Obviously we got the setup currently tracking the moon. So the moon is right there. Saturn is behind those trees. I'll show you Saturn in a second. But then we have the laptop here. And this is a live view of the moon, actually. I'm gonna widen this out a little bit so you can see more of it. That is the moon with a tree branch in the way there. But I mean, you can see if I do a little close up view here, you can clearly see a live view of all the details in those craters there. That is actually very, very still seeing. We live right by O'Hare, so it's always really wobbly. So what I can do is 
with this live view it's zoomed in I can hit play and it'll automatically start capturing frames those are pictures this number here those are pictures it's taking so in 10 seconds it took about 800 pictures absolutely insane that's exactly how it's going to look for Saturn. I'm going to hit the play button. It's going to take thousands and thousands of pictures. And then in my software later on, it will go through every single frame of that video. Ooh, something just flew by. That was awesome. It'll go through every frame of that video and it'll select the best percentage of them and blend those together. Best meaning the clearest with the least amount of atmospheric wobbliness. So yeah, that's the situation. And then Saturn, if we back up here, there it is. Right below that tree line. It's the bright one right in there. All right, you guys want to see the thing that got me into astrophotography? That's Saturn right there. And right in here, you can see, we have a live view of Saturn. This is the main planet, which we'll get a close up in a second. These, these dots here, that line of dots, those are all the moons of the planet. So as you can see right here, this is a moon, this is a moon, right here is a moon, right here is a moon, here is a moon. And then we do a close up on the planet, zoom it in a bunch, we can see Saturn in all its glory absolutely incredible so i haven't even seen saturn in the live view for a minute it took me less than 30 seconds to realize that this barlow lens is absolutely going to be necessary the extra boost in resolution is going to do me way better than shooting at the native focal length with a little bit sharper of an image this is where it gets a little crazy i'm already centered on saturn in fact actually let me make sure what i'm going to need to do now is carefully very carefully remove the camera from the imaging train without bumping the setup and then attach the barlow lens let me and then reinsert the camera into the telescope okay i think we did it perfectly <laughs> it's a big donut all right here's what i've been waiting for i've been taking pictures of saturn for about the past hour or so and now is the time that i want to switch into visually observing the planet so what we're going to do first is we're going to center saturn so i'm going to move it putting it in the very dead center so that'll make it easier when i switch out my imaging camera with my eyepiece Remove it. Oh my god. It just, it literally never gets old. It's so immersive, the view of Saturn through an eyepiece. It's like you can reach out and grab it, you know? It's like you're floating in space and you're just... That's amazing. 